here in North Dakota, right here you have a lot of riot police. And, um, people have shut down the pipeline for the day an hour and a half ago, two hours ago. Breaking. Riot police begin mass arrests at Dakota Access Pipeline. FB censors video at a critical moment of our coverage of a Dakota Access Pipeline direct action today. Facebook's automated censorship system blocked our video URL, shortly before two of our journalists were arrested on site. As we started to cover today's direct action, our collective members immediately noticed that the full live stream was being blocked from Facebook. Posts and comments with the URL both immediately triggered pop-up security alerts. We tried putting the same URL through bit.ly shortening and that official unicorn ride page post was deleted by Facebook within a few minutes. Finally we went with sharing our live channel URL on our own website which had the embed included on it. We also verified that the Facebook debugger warned that our live video URL violated community standards. Both Facebook and law enforcement acted to block our media distribution today, but we will not let them stop our mission to amplify the voices of people who might otherwise go unheard, and broadcast the stories that might otherwise go untold. Also, as one member of the collective, I should point out it is obviously concerning when a large media conglomerate blocks URLs to competing video platforms. A surveillance plane was also seen patrolling the protest site, reports Unicorn Riot. Anti-media has reached out to Morton County Sheriff's Department for comment and will update this story if they respond. Democracy Now!'s coverage in North Dakota over Labor Day weekend of the Native American-led protests against the Dakota Access Pipeline. On Saturday, September 3rd, Democracy Now! filmed security guards working for the Dakota Access Pipeline Company using dogs and pepper spray to attack protesters. 
these people are just we're threatening all of us with them, these dogs. And she, that woman over there, she was charging them and it bit somebody right in the face. The dog has blood in its nose and its mouth. And she's still standing here threatening. You can't get Why are you letting their, her dog go out Democracy Now!'s video report went viral online. Our footage was rebroadcast on many outlets, including CBS, NBC, NPR.org, CNN, MSNBC, and Huffington Post. Also charged was Cody Hall for his alleged presence at the September 3rd land defense action and for a subsequent protest on September 6th. Hall is considered a lead organizer in the movement against the Dakota Access Pipeline and was arrested at one of the checkpoints that have been erected by North Dakota authorities to restrict access to the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation and the growing pipeline opposition camps. Hall was denied bail and remained in jail throughout the weekend. Hall's attorneys and several others we spoke to confirmed it's highly unusual for a defendant charged with misdemeanor trespass to be jailed and denied bail. According to the complaint, the charges are based on a viewing of Democracy Now!'s video report of the incident conducted by the North Dakota to Bureau of Criminal Investigation. Special Agent Lindsey Wohl's sworn affidavit states that I was there as a journalist. Wohl wrote, quote, Amy Goodman can be seen on the video identifying herself and interviewing protesters about their involvement in the protest, unquote. The criminal complaint was approved by Assistant State's Attorney for Morton County, Gabrielle J. Goder. To date, none of the private security personnel shown in the video, both assaulting protesters and commanding their dogs to attack them, have been charged or arrested. Democracy Now! is consulting with attorneys in North Dakota, as well as at the Center for Constitutional Rights. CCR legal director Bahar Azmi said, quote, this is clearly a violation of the First Amendment, an attempt to repress this important political movement by silencing media coverage, unquote. Texas company commits to controversial Dakota Access Pipeline A group from the Saginaw Chippewa Reservation in Mount Pleasant, Michigan way to raise the reservation's flag after entering an encampment where hundreds of protesters have gathered on the banks of the Cannonball River to stop construction of the Energy Transfer Partners Dakota Access Oil Pipeline near the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation in Cannonball, North Dakota. Energy Transfer Partner CEO Kelsey Warren said in a memo to employees at the four state. 1,172-mile project is nearly 60 percent complete and that concerns about the pipeline's impact on the local water supply are unfounded. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and others argue the project will impact drinking water for thousands of tribal members and millions downstream. I am confident that as long as the government ultimately decides the fate of the project based on science and engineering, the Dakota Access Pipeline will become operational. So we will continue to obey the rules and trust the process," he wrote. Standing Rock Tribal Chairman Dave Archambotu said he and the thousands of others who have gathered at an encampment in southern North Dakota to protest won't budge. People are still coming down here and are committed to stopping the project, he said. Warren's memo, which was released to some media outlets, is the first time in months the company has provided significant details of the project. The company often has ignored requests for comment from the Associated Press. Our corporate mindset has long been to keep our head down and do our work, his memo said. It has not been my preference to engage in a media PR battle. However, misinformation has dominated the news, so we will work to communicate with the government and media more clearly in the days to come. The Standing Rock Sioux is challenging the Army Corps of Engineers' decision to grant about 200 permits at water crossings for pipeline, which goes through the Dakotas and Iowa to Illinois. The tribe says the project will disturb sacred sites and impact drinking water. Wakaya Eagleman of the Saikongu Lakota, told CBS News Colin they just came in and destroyed it. Eagleman also blamed federal authorities for instigating violence during the protests. Yeah. You know they instigated the whole situation. They came to use their dogs on my people, Wakaya said. They came and mazed us. So what else are we supposed to do? We ain't going to stand and let them do this anymore. Energy Transfer Partners disputes the claims of Native Americans, the tribe's effort to temporarily block construction near its reservation on the North Dakota-South Dakota border was denied by U.S. District Judge James Bosberg. On Friday, 
but minutes later, federal officials ordered a temporary halt to construction on Army Corps land around and underneath Lake Awe, one of six reservoirs on the Missouri River. Three federal agencies also asked ETP for a voluntary pause and work for 20 miles, 32 kilometers, on either side of Lake Awe. The federal department said the case highlighted the need for a serious discussion about nationwide reforms with respect to considering tribes' views on these types of infrastructure projects. Arshambo said the consultations were one-sided and that they met with us after their plans were already made.